What's up, everybody? We are back for the weekly challenge, and I left you with this beautiful hand here yesterday, and I asked you what you wanted to open, and I'm positive quite a few of you opened a heart with this hand. Number one, because you're always predisposed to open your major suits with five of them, and number two, that is a solid heart suit that is absolutely sexy, right? This is a beautiful suit, so you might have been just, just lured by the beauty of that suit to open one heart, but it's wrong. It's wrong because we're never gonna get to show a six five hand if we open one heart. And the rest of this hand is kind of hidden at least somewhat when we open a heart. We're only gonna be able to convince partner we're five five in that spot usually. So the way we open this hand is we start with a club and we fully intend to reverse afterwards if we need to. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if we're at a relatively high level when we get back because when we are shaped this way, we can expect the opponents to have some sort of whacked out shape as well. So if we get to some sort of preemptive hand, a strong bit of hearts afterwards will kind of show this sort of shape as well. So let's let's open a club and we'll see if the opponents are, are gonna be jamming this auction in either spades or diamonds pretty quickly. That, wow, look at what we get here. My goodness, partner responds a heart. <laughs> so they have at least four hearts and we have five of this suit. So now we're going to just look at our potential bids here. So we want to show a very strong raise in hearts because picture this, guys. Picture the ace small of clubs and the ace of one of those other suits. Ace of spades, ace small of clubs. That's an eight count that we can make a slam opposite all day long, right? We know partner has at least four hearts. So here, give him eight points. Ace of spades, ace of clubs, ace of diamonds, ace of clubs. We're cold for slam, right? So even with only a 15 count over here, it's such in a massive position that we want to make sure we show it properly. So let's see. That's a jump shift. I'm thinking, hoping that was a splinter. It's not. Is that? There we go. There's our splinter bid. And we want to show a massive hand, which is exactly what we have. Um, let's see. What's three diamonds? All right, so three diamonds doesn't, looks like it doesn't even necessarily show a fit. So here, we're going to splinter, see what partner does. Whoa, they make a control bid, but they are denying the ace of spades, right? Unfortunate, but they did make a control bid here. I'm just going to bid five hearts, knowing that I've really sold my hand, and I want to deny the ace king of diamonds. If partner has the ace of diamonds, I would think they would make a call here, and they don't. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So even though partner did try to bid a slam, which honestly, look at that first round control, folks. It is certainly not a a uh, an, an ace of clubs. It is a void, right? Which is kind of nice over here. Ooh, we're seeing this. Let's take a peek at that last trick. Ace of spades, 10. Okay. We're, we're just going to pitch this. We know that's not going to get rough to our left. And now I believe we can just claim city this, right? We're going to have to draw. We only have to rough two cards. So yeah. This is good. Even with Trump's breaking badly, notice that we could just get to draw three rounds of Trump and rough two small diamonds with this one. So pretty neat spot there. Uh, good to stay out of slam, right? We don't want to bid slam when they have two aces in their hand. <laughs> if we were void in diamonds, we might consider it, especially when partner decides to continue. And look, partner did a really good job here. After we bid uh, four diamonds, um, to be honest, in realistic circles, four spades would be their control bid, showing first or second, right? And then they, they would get a chance to hear us try to make a control bid as well. But at this point, they only bid first round controls, so they showed their first, which was descriptive for us. We know we're missing the ace of spades, so we just kick it into five hearts. If we were void in diamonds, we would now bid five diamonds and partner would bid a slam, you would guess, right? So in this one, happy to be in just five hearts making five. And uh, remember, when you have this shape, guys, you just always are opening your lower ranking suit. And don't worry about reversing. You might say, well, I only have 15 points. Look at this hand. Is this 15 points or would you say it's worth much more than that? Especially on this hand when we find a fit, right? It's unbelievably strong. Uh, so if it, let's say it went a club pass a spade by partner. Unlikely, right? The opponents are probably getting in there most of the time. But now we would bid two hearts and then we would bid hearts again later. And that's how we show 6-5. We, we reverse into hearts, and then we bid hearts again later. And now partner says, whoa, whoa, 
They show that they have five hearts now. Why did they open a club? Well, it's because they're 6-5, right? And that's how that logic is going to work. We're going to open a club. We're going to bid hearts twice. And partner's going to know, well, if they were only 5-5, five, five, they would have opened hearts and rebid clubs twice. So here, they open a club and rebid hearts twice. That is 6-5. Now, sometimes you're going to have way less values, right? Sometimes with 6-5 and like an 8 or 9 count, maybe you open your major and then bid your minor twice just because it's important to get in there with those types of hands and start describing them early before the auction gets too far out of whack for you to be able to do that. And other times, maybe with even weaker hands, you just wait for a two-suited bid to open up later if possible, right? So here, with this strong of a hand, we want to get in there right away. And uh, we end up in a, you know, in a good spot. Partner tried to bid a slam and so did we. And we didn't find one, which is good. Okay. Wow. Look at this one. One spade, pass one no trump, and this is your hand. Wow. Make your bid, folks. That's a tough one. Don't worry. You can pause it if you need to. In a best hand tournament, even without the ideal shape here, I would love to get into this auction and I'm going to. I can't double. And I the reason I can't double is the only thing that's been bid so far is spades. So technically I would be showing cards in all three of the unbid suits and I just don't have it, right? So I'm just gonna bid two diamonds, right? I'm just gonna make a natural bid. I would. This is usually supposed to be six, but I already have a good enough hand. I have an opening hand. My spade suit may not be amazing here, especially with left-hand opponent opening a spade, but I'm just worried if I don't take a call, we might not get a chance. Now, maybe we get to defend one no trump, but I'm not too happy about that either, especially with this club shortness, and they might just have a whole bunch of tricks here. So I'm just going to bid two diamonds. We're going to see if partner cooperates. And no, here, there, here's that limit raise with three card support. Now we're out, right? We've done our job, and maybe I kind of almost in hindsight wish we didn't do anything because now the declarer knows kind of where the values are in this hand. So at this point, I'm just going to play this. Okay, interesting. And, uh, you know, th this is a spot where you're probably supposed to split most of the time, but here there's no reason to. If they're going to take this finesse, they're going to take it. And, hey, if partner has, like, stiff jack here, we get to take both of these tricks. So we're just going to play low. And, ooh, okay, good. They hopped ace. Just what we wanted. And they could have done much better, obviously. Take a look. All right, so here... I'm going to play a diamond, right? I'm going to start trying to tap out that declares hand as much as possible. And I'm going to save this trump in my hand for later. And here they go. They're drawing it. And now I'm just going to keep tapping. I'm not worried about them pitching anything over here. And I just have these nice safe exits from my hand. I'm not breaking any of those side suits for them. And here we'll just play a low heart. Boom. Partner takes their club. Here comes a club back. And at this point, I'm just going to play another low heart. Bingo. Now we'll play another diamond. And there is what tapping out does, guys. It gives you that extra trick. And here it didn't really matter. They were pitching a loser on loser anyway. They were going to either lose a heart or that diamond here. But notice how safe we were on this hand defensively. Right. Once we see that, uh, you know, the declare is going to be out of diamonds, we just always have safe exits and we're not worried about declare pitching anything on a long suit. The dummy is very flat. Right. So once this ace of diamonds gets played and the queen drops, even though they didn't have to do that, right, they could have just played uh, a low, uh, sorry, a low diamond and then the queen falls on the other one. Notice they didn't want to take a finesse because they were worried. They thought we had six diamonds. They should. Right. So they were very worried about getting roughed on their second round of diamonds. So they, they correctly hopped up with the ace. But now once we get in, right, especially after they make this kind of error by not uh, taking this finesse, we just win the queen and now king of diamonds, safe. Jack of diamonds, very safe, right? Let them rough, boom. Now that we're just letting them play to us. Once again here, do we want to break clubs? Do we want to break hearts? No and no. Lead another diamond, right? Never unsafe, especially now that dummy's out of spades, we can do this until our heart's content, right? So at this point, they guessed clubs wrong as well. <laughs> they, they guessed incorrectly on a couple of levels here. They could have done much better. But once again, folks, same declare at the other table, so we can't expect to win too much in these spots. The one thing we did correct, I believe, is just not getting crazy with this hand and doing anything other than uh, bidding two diamonds. Double would have worked out probably pretty well if they did, in fact, choose to bid hearts. I mean, they may, who knows with the robot, they may still choose to bid their six card club suit, but we kind of avoided 
you know, any sort of problem here by just kind of bidding in our naturalish type way. We wish we had a six card suit, but we don't. If it went a club pass a no trump, I would always double with this hand, right? Totally different because now I have cards in all these suits. Even with a five card suit being a minor, I would get in there because the majors are a destination that we can certainly play. But sometimes we're dic what is dictated is just what they open, right? They'll they'll let us know what they're choosing to do, and we'll be kind of barred from bidding in a lot of these spots with hands like that. So take a look at our starting hand on board nine. I think you guys might be able to predict what I do with this hand, but make your bid anyway. And we'll see what we do tomorrow. And we'll also get a final result for this challenge. I think it's pretty close, guys. I I don't think we've done anything terrible. And uh, other than maybe we could have board four, I think might be that one where we might get it one extra trick, but I think board six might be a gain. So it seems like it's pretty close still, folks. We'll, we'll find out tomorrow when we get the final score, and hopefully we don't have any disasters going forward. Stay tuned, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.